Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 8. Thoughts? This episode is called Valediction. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after strikers. And then there's some links to the videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive in. So yeah, this was a very strong season finale. And yeah, wrapped up the the stuff that it needed to. I'm really glad that Dottie is still out there. And yeah, the yeah, so the the opening scene of this is the radio show has caught up to the end of Captain America 1 which of course you know we the viewer watching this episode are you know reminded of that scene and the end you know the, the one of the last scenes of this episode you know very clearly references it with Peggy you know trying to talk a man who was important in winning the war for the Allied side out of crashing his plane. So, yeah, quite nicely done. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, very, I really appreciate that the, near the end of the episode before this, we get the, you know, we get this setup for this potentially really effective weapon, item 17, and, you know, yeah, by the end of the episode, the, the bad guys have it, and the, the good guys have, you know, yeah, have to stop it. And, yeah, uh, very nicely done when, when Sousa accidentally inhales a little of the gas and you know the various yeah both both Jack Thompson and Peggy you know see the the effects of it firsthand and I gotta admit when I f when I first saw that he was being affected by it, I kinda thought oh that's too bad I really like Daniel Sousa He's not going to be in the rest of this episode, is he? He's going to be in that hospital bed, strapped down for the rest of it. But no, instead, he actually turns out to be the one person who, you know, I guess I'll keep calling him Dr. Ivchenko, uh, Dr. Fenhoff, that's the real, yeah. Um, the one person that he t really tries to manipulate, that he is never able to manipulate. And I think that it might be in in part because Sousa experienced losing control at the start of this episode and you know he made the decision I'm not gonna let that happen again and and in both cases it was at the hand of Fenhoff and yeah so the Dottie and Fenhoff are forced to pull over and it seems like they're gonna get away. Very nice touch by Dottie with you. I, oh, I'm just, I'm ever so sorry, sir. I would let my grandfather drive, but he's blind in one eye. And, you know, he adds in war injury, you know. And it's like, okay, you know, that's like, you know, what is he gonna do? Bring her in and, and have this poor old codger you know, I don't know, I guess call a cab and hope that the the guy doesn't realize that this is someone he could take advantage of, you know, just the, the, um, I'm, I'm not saying that that's necessarily something that would happen, but, you know, yeah, Dot, Dottie puts pictures in, in people's heads, and, you know, he, the, the cop turns away, and, you know, is walking back to the car, and then he gets the, the message, and, you know, he gets the, the gun ready and turns around and Dottie's already staying there. And I really like that we don't see right away what happened next. Because it is this thing of, yeah, it's more useful for them to have a hypnotized cop than a dead cop, you know. So, yeah, very, very nicely done that. Because if we just, you know... If we actually saw Fenhoff like step out of the car and walk up, we'd be like, "Oh, he's gonna hypnotize." But because we just see her, you know, with the gun ready, 
you know, yeah, we assume that the you know it's gonna be you know it's murder. And let's see the yeah, uh, Sousa says, you know, yeah, I mean, I still want to kill Thompson, but no more than usual. And, yeah, so the, you know, Howard has come back and is willing to explain everything. So, the yeah, the gas is called midnight oil, which, you know, as in burning the midnight oil, as in working really late, which is what it was originally supposed to do. And, yeah, he explains, you know, Finau, that was, you know, very, very nicely done. I gotta say, I didn't put it together un until the, until Howard really spelled it out, though I can imagine some people might have, you know, and, let's see, the, um, right, before I, so yeah, later in this episode, we're told that Howard is not putting this stuff back in the vault. He's going to destroy it all because no one, no, what was it? No country can, you know, be trusted with these things. And it's like, I mean, I feel like the implication is supposed to be, but Tony Stark, now there's a man who can be trusted with weapons of mass destruction. And it's like, have you seen the movies? <laughs> like, he does, he very much cannot. Like, that's... But, yeah. Um, moving on. But, yeah, Howard offers to, you know, to be used as bait. Which is quite clever. And I really appreciate that he's actually, like, you know... Occasionally he is capable of being serious. You know, when... I, I think it's Sousa who confronts him, like, you know, the your your invention killed a lot of people, got something funny to say about that, and he doesn't try to respond with a joke. He actually takes it completely seriously. And Howard's brilliant idea is a press conference, because I guess that's where Tony gets that, that... A press con you know, and it actually, it goes better than Tony Stark's press conferences, at least the ones we see. And <laughs> I did quite enjoy, you know, Thompson is standing there and, like, Stark is trying to, to pad it and he's like, he is a hero. He is a hero. We are humbled by his his genius. No, no brilliance. We are humbled by his brilliance. We are humbled. Now here's Howard Stark. You know he he cannot get the words out. Let's see. And I will say the moment that I saw how wide that shot was. That that supposedly Dottie fired immediately. I'm thinking. That was definitely purposefully missing. There's no way, because we've seen she's a crack shot. There's no way that she would miss like that. But, you know, you can understand why the, the, the SSR agents don't realize that until after Howard has already been taken. Which, you know, get Liam Neeson. Not sure he's doing anything more important these days. He used to, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, and and yeah, you know, Howard tries to talk the the cop, Officer Pike, played by Da Dajuan Johnson, talk him out of it, which is really his go-to move for situations like that. And. I really appreciate that Jack, that the Thompson is finally showing respect and taking seriously Peggy. Uh, you know, he's he's actually talking to her like they are equals. You know, they're they're figuring out what exactly, you know, what's the plan, what's going on, what, what are Fenhoff and Dottie doing. Let's see. And 
and yeah, Fenhoff explains why he hates Howard so much. You know, and it's not just the fact that, you know, one day Howard will have a son who will create nearly every single villain he fights over the course of the movies by being a douchebag. But it's also the fact that he saw Finau, not after, but while it was happening. And yeah, you can understand, you know, and he says, you have been my singular focus ever since. So yeah, that is very, very compelling villain. And, you know, Howard tries to talk some sense into him. Please don't do this accent. It's very off-putting. And I do appreciate, you know, and, and yeah, the, the, you know, he says, take me to your greatest shame. And we see, you know, it was the fact that he couldn't save Steve. And that, I, I really appreciate, you know, there's a lot of light material on this show when it comes to Stark, to, to Howard, but that is legitimately, occasionally it does actually delve into his character and talk about, yeah, that is the kind of thing that absolutely, you know, based on the the other episodes of it and the, the movie, the, the first Captain America movie, yeah, I 100% believe that that is something that really, that, that still hurts. And, yeah, we learn that Jarvis knows how to fly, and, you know, yeah, under the circumstances, he's willing to, to shoot down Howard. And, yeah, Peg gets to, Peggy gets to the, the room, and we have the classic thing of, like, I mean, she's right there, you have a gun on her. Like, you don't have to shoot to kill, like, shoot her in the leg or something, but then we wouldn't have the fight, and that would be a shame. But the the climax was slightly underwhelming, um, but at least she's still around. I, I would rather that, that, you know, I haven't watched any of season two yet, but I really, really hope that they do bring her back and give her something really compelling to, yeah. And... Let's see, we have the, um, yeah, um, very, very clever of Sousa to, th that he put in earplugs. Because you did, you know, earlier there was that thing of, you know, if, if he talks, you know, don't let him talk. If he talks, what was it, you're done for or something like that. Yeah, you know, the, the, um, shortly after that exchange... Sousa put in earplugs, and, and yeah, as soon as he saw that the doctor was saying something, he knew, ah, I, I bet he's going to tell me to shoot Jack. So I'll pretend that I'm going along with that, you know, just very, very nicely done. And of course, you know, Jack is there on the ground like, no, please don't, don't shoot, don't listen to him. And, you know, the doctor is used to people doing what he says when he's able to, to hypnotize. So, yeah, you know, he he lets Sousa get that close that he can slug him. And, yeah, you know, the, the things that Sousa said, I've only watched the scene once, but I'm willing to bet if I go back and watch all that again, yeah, 100%. You know, he didn't say anything that would either betray the fact that he can't hear what the doctor is saying or suggests, no, 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 he, he hears it and he understands it, which makes it weird that he then pulls out earplugs. How is that? You know, the, the things that he said were, you know, it sounded like, oh, he's, you know, he's going, he's being hypnotized. But without, yeah, very, very nicely done. And let's see, we see the. Um, um, 
yes, the the um, I really appreciate that you know Peg Peggy says you know you have to you know you have to let Steve go. We all do, you know, which is of course like that is it is extremely difficult to do you know but it is a necessary part of the grieving process so yeah i i quite appreciate the i i suppose i don't know if i felt like it was that big of an overall overarching theme of the season I suppose, let's see, there was the part where early on she blamed herself. Yeah, yeah. Early, she blamed herself for getting, for, for Steve's death as well as her first roommate. And then she, you know, did agree to be Angie's roommate. Or, or I guess not. Is a roommate? No, I guess they're just living in the same building. Anyway, a couple doors down. Y yeah, a door down. One door down. Whatever. Um, yes, yes, we saw that in the when when Peggy had to stay outside the window and Angie's being questioned by the SSR. Yes, so the you know that was her taking minor steps towards it, and now she's fully accepting. You know, also pouring some blood you know, hopefully into the water and not, like, onto the head of some poor dock worker or something, but, you know, yeah, it, it is a, I, I really appreciate turning something like that into, like, an important, you know, a, a theme. It is, it is, it is very difficult, but also extremely important, and, yeah, they realize that Dottie is gone, and Peggy, of course, says, I suspect we haven't seen the last of her, which I think means that she realizes she's in a piece of American television. And <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty funny when Howard hugs Jarvis, and Jarvis looks like, what, what, is, what is going on? Like, this is, you know, like... If Howard had just canceled gravity all over the planet, Jarvis would not have looked more unnerved or uncomfortable by this circumstance. And, yeah, they applaud Peggy, but then Thompson does get and take the credit, you know, when the... the uh, the guy from the Senate comes in, and I think, again, the, it's supposed to be this thing of, you know, again, I am in favor of female empowerment. I don't think this show is doing the best job with it, because, like, she says, oh, it doesn't matter, but I I feel like the over the course of the season, she's been trying to get the, the the respect of others and now she says it doesn't matter I do really approve you know I, I do think that more than other people's approval it matters a lot that you respect yourself and and she says she does so that's great at least um, yeah that is right and and yeah so at the very end we see um, Dr. Arnim Zola, played yet again by Toby Jones. And, yeah, I mean, I guess that's how, that's part of how Hydra, you know, manages to take over S.H.I.E.L.D. Very nicely done. The, you know, the, the two of them working together, I mean. Let's see, the... Yeah, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. So originally, Neil McDonough was a, supposed to appear as Dum Dum Dugan, pilot of the plane that goes after Howard Stark. McDonough ended up being unavailable, which according to the writers was a blessing in disguise as it was more emotionally satisfying that the character of Jarvis pilot the plane. Absolutely agreed. And, oh, yeah, 
Howard Stark has the personal phone number of Rosalind Russell, a comedic actress known for her role in His Girl Friday. Tony Stark names one of his AI programs Friday, possibly as a no nod to Russell. Very clever. And, uh, yeah, the focus method used by Dr. Faustus is the same one that Whitehall, Daniel Whitehall uses in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It makes people comply with the Faustus method. So, very nicely done there. And this features Dr. Arnim Zola coming in contact with Dr. Ivchenko. This could imply that the Winter Soldier program was cre created with the support of Dr. Ivchenko. Which does make a lot of sense. They, you know, they were able, they they use these um, keywords to to activate, you know, Bucky instead of the, you know, which which enables anyone who knows the code words to do it as, you know, the yeah. So the you know so that. Bucky could be use, used long after Ivchenko is no longer able to himself do it. So, yeah. Let's see. I think that might be about what I have to say. Um, yes, I, I will close out with the following so I with each time I I do think it's it's a very cool creepy like really really messed up concept of this thing of you know making normal people kill each other in, in gruesome ways with the with the midnight oil the moment that in this episode that we were told oh you know everyone is dead there's not a single survivor. Every time I hear it, because this is not the first time. Every time I hear a story that has that sort of thing, I I always think to myself, so did two of them did the, the, the very last two like both I don't know, punch the other like yeah, let's say both of them had a had a Something had a, I guess not. It wouldn't be a brick, but something heavy. Let's go with brick, you know. And at the exact same time, you know, one of them's hitting one in the the head, and the other manages to hit the other in the head at the exact right moment. I guess it's possible that one of them, after killing others, just eventually like had a heart attack or something. <laughs> 